over a period of about a year or two, um, we had, you know, a significant amount of money of investors money, um, tied up in that. And so I was getting a little concerned about it. And one Saturday I went out and drove around some of these properties and found out that some of these properties didn't even exist. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up, what's up, you're listening to Men of Abundance. This is Wally Carmichael, your founder and host of the Men of Abundance podcast, the Pay It Forward community. I'm talking a little bit low on this particular episode because I'm traveling, I'm in a hotel, it's very late at night, and I just need to do what I got to do to get this episode out to you all. So I'm going to make this very short as well. All I ask is that you be abundant in your actions today by paying it forward and sharing Men of Abundance with everyone you come in contact with. Today is another financial-based conversation, but of course, as usual, we get much deeper into the mindset of your finances and of being a man of abundance. And of course, we touch on the strategies as well, but as you know, mindset is super important in everything that you do. And the kick in the gut moment that Terry shares with us today, wow, it's going to blow your mind and it shows the abundant leader that Terry is. So our featured guest today is a longtime business owner and investor. He is a graduate of the University of New Mexico and began his career as a controller for the largest company in New Mexico. In 1987, he started his first business, First Financial Escrow Incorporated. Over the years, his business grew until in 1997, he purchased the real estate contract division from the largest bank in New Mexico. October 2017 marked First Financial's 30th year in business. In 2004, Terry started SunWest Trust to serve the needs of investors that wanted to invest their individual retirement accounts in investments other than what was widely offered. SunWest Trust is now one of the leading self-directed IRA custodians in the country with assets under custody exceeding $1.5 billion. Along the way, Terry has invested himself in many areas of real estate and started several other businesses. Men of Abundance, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Terry White. Terry, welcome to Men of Abundance, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Wally, how are you? <laughs> I am just doing absolutely wonderful. Um, it's Thursday, the day that time we're recording this. It's actually Valentine's Day. Yeah, happy <laughs> Valentine's fun. Day. Same to you. <laughs> uh, my wife aren't really big fans of Valentine's Day per se, because uh, yeah. we just we just really enjoy life as we go. Um, but what's really exciting for today, for me anyway, is my oldest son and his wife are going to be driving down this evening, and they'll probably let themselves in while we're in bed. Uh, so they'll be here tomorrow morning. Cool. So I'm excited about that. But um, that's, that's what I'm grateful for today. What do you have to be grateful for today? You know what? I was uh, I was interviewing somebody on my podcast the other day, and the one thing we agreed on was just I'm grateful for being born in the United States. Mm. Um, I don't care what you you know what what we say about it or what we do. There's no other place that affords the opportunity that you have here. Absolutely correct. It's funny because um, yesterday I was listening to one of my coaches, uh, Mark Mowini. And he lives in Canada. And he brought that up. He was talking to a guy who's actually from the UK and now lives in the United States. And he asked him, how do you like living in the United States? He said, and he said, they both agreed it's the best darn country in the world. And even Mark was saying, he talks to people all the time. It's like, it's your country. Why are you bashing your country? It's a great place. There's, yeah, everybody's got issues, but it's just a great place to be. Well, it's interesting too, even people from, you wouldn't think Canada or the UK would be that much different, but to hear somebody from those places say that, I mean, we're, we're just, we take it for granted. Um, and I, you know, I just, I, I try not to do that every day because we're just so fortunate to have the opportunities, number one, of just being here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, regardless of what people say, you can pretty much do anything you want to do here if you, if you put in the effort. 
Absolutely. And the other gentleman went as far as saying, he said, he will never go back. He will always, as far as long as he can control it, he will always live in the United States. And listen, guys, you know, if you have any question about this, just travel a little bit more. I've been to 23 countries on five continents and I've seen what other countries go through. And, uh, you know, there's great things about other countries. There's great things about Europe. There's great things about Asia. When it all comes down to it, I just think that America is still one of the best places to live in the entire world. Of course, depending on what you want your lifestyle to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's real important to put that into perspective. So where are you at in the world today, Terry? I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, and uh, just so people know, this that New Mexico is on the north side of that future wall or not wall, but um, we're, we're kind of like Mexico only new. Right, yeah. Like <laughs> and I've been to Albuquerque. I used to live in, I lived in El Paso, Texas for about four years. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we would drive down to Albuquerque every year, about this time of year, I think it is, when they have the uh, balloon festival. It's in, actually, it's in October. October it's the first weekend right. yeah, yeah. in October. So it's the first weekend in October. But yeah, well, the nice thing about New Mexico is even in the middle of winter, you know, we can get a little bit of snow. And then that afternoon, you'll have beautiful blue skies. And, you know, it's kind of cold now. We're down in the yeah. 40s. But um, it's nice because we have four distinct seasons here. It's absolutely beautiful. We love, we really, really love New Mexico. I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona. And oh, okay. my wife is from Panama from Central America. But if you come into our house, we have a lot of, uh, most of, a lot of our furniture is Southwest <laughs> and yeah. uh, kind of Native American motif. Uh, we really like all the clay pots and all that kind of stuff. So it's it really, we really plenty do. of that here. <laughs> I know. I remember uh -huh. that's part of the reason why we used to go down there all the time, just go shopping and find that kind of stuff. Really cool. So Terry, how would you introduce yourself? I talked a little bit about you in a brief bio that was provided to me, but um, let's get a little bit deeper. How would you, um, how would you describe yourself? And we're going to eventually get into that kick in the gut moment here in a minute, but. That bio probably, the bio is kind of a fluffy thing, you know, all the things I've done and stuff, but, but ultimately I think, um, you know, I'm a family man. I'm fortunate enough to have three boys that all have three wonderful wives and I have two, uh, amazing little grandsons. And, uh, you know, I just, I enjoy life. I've been very blessed. And, and with my business and my family, uh, I couldn't imagine things being much better than that. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. And, and I think that's what, uh, what's the most important thing to me. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful, man. I love it. And with, um, you know, you're, you're right, your bio, well, and it's the same as many of them, it just kind of talks about what you've done, where you've been and everything. But I found it very impressive. Uh, along with the one sheets that uh, interview valet had provided to me and shared with me. Uh, and Karen once in a while gets on Karen Schwab uh, gets mm -hmm. on and she'll send me a video and she'll really talk about the guests that she wants to present to me, which I absolutely love when she does that. Uh, what is, uh, let's take a really quick little uh, detour here real quick. I would like for you to tell the listeners what your experience is in working with interview valet. Um, you know, I've not, I've only worked with them for maybe six months. Um, and they've been awesome. I, I, I have my own podcast, which is about business. I'm, I'm just fascinated by what people do to make a living. Um, <laughs> and I've been in business for 32 years now, almost uh, yeah. for myself. And so, um, I was as a way to promote my business, promote my ideas about self-directed IRAs and that kind of thing. I was trying to figure out how to get on people's podcasts because I'm a, I'm a podcast junkie. I love listening to them. And I found them just, uh, you know, through a Google search or something. And they have been just amazing. They've got me on some great podcasts. I've met some really interesting people. Um, and so I, I would highly recommend it. And I think, <clears throat> you know, I, I just, I would highly recommend uh, them if anybody who wants to get on, inter you know, do interviews on podcasts and, and get with the kind of podcasts that that um, are interested in what what I have to talk about. You know, there's a ton of podcasts out there, but a lot of them really don't fit with with what I'm talking about or what I'm what my objective is. Yeah, absolutely, and they're they're very good about that. And and for those of you out there who have a message and want to put it out there, working with a company like Interview Valley and Interview Valley specifically, they do much more than just make connections with all the podcast hosts and find the right one for you, where your audience is already at and they're captivated, they're listening, they want to hear your message, but they go as far as you know, creating, ad, you know, the, the, the social media posts and coach you if you need the coaching to how to do the best, you know, interview and, and provide 
uh, value not only to the audience, but also get something out of it yourself. Because ultimately, that's what everybody's doing, right? You're not just yeah. out there just telling a message just to tell a message. Um, you want that message heard by the right people and, you know, get some publicity and get some recognition for your work as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, it's, it's amazing to me. Uh, I mean, I'm fairly new to podcasts, but I mean, there is just so much information out there and so many great uh, interviewers, podcasters that, I mean, I would encourage everybody to, you know, go out and find one that you, that you enjoy and you probably find 15 that you enjoy and listen to them because there's some great information out there. Yeah, that's a fact. I, I have to curb my enthusiasm sometimes because I'll notice I got too many podcasts in my feed and I'm, I just can't consume all the content. So Terry, one of the things I like to bring up is that kick in the gut moment. And being <laughs> with your background, I'm sure you've had a few. So if you would share a kick in the gut moment with us and really make us feel that. You know, I, I've listened to your podcast and I uh, kind of you send a thing of the flow and all that. So I knew this was coming up. But again, I've been in business, Wally, for 32 years. And so, man, there's a ton of them. Um, and I think, you know, I can share one specific one with you that was like one of the bigger ones. I used to do a lot of, uh, I buy contracts. I don't know if you're familiar with cash flows and that kind of thing. But um, I used to buy, and I still do buy some, and then we turn around and get investors to invest in them. And so at one time, I was dealing with this one particular guy uh, we have an area called the East Mountains here. And so he was over there putting together mobile home land packages. And then we would buy the contract from him. And what that is, is like he would sell the property to someone and carry the financing. So those people would pay monthly payments for their, like a mortgage or something. And then he would turn around and sell that, the right to that income. And I would buy that. And then we put investors in that. So over a period of about a year or two, um, we had, you know, a significant amount of money of investors money um, tied up in that. And so I was getting a little concerned about it. And one Saturday I went out and drove around some of these properties and found out that some of these properties didn't even exist. Um, you know, he was, I, I got too comfortable with this guy. When he first started bringing us deals, we'd go out and look at the property and, you know, and then he'd bring us a deal and it's like, well, we've done business with him for six months now. And, you know, it's, this is, I'm sure it's a good deal. And we, we got lazy, um, you know, and so we didn't do our due diligence the way we should have. And so I quit going out and looking at them. Well, I went this one Saturday and looked at them, found out that there were just vacant pieces of property that were supposed to have mobile homes on them with people living in them. There were, there were some with mobile homes on them that hadn't been uh, permanently attached yet and nobody living in them. So I went over to his place and I said, we, you know, went in and said, we've got to meet. And he wasn't there at the time. So I said, okay, we're going to meet um, the, 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 on Monday. And uh, Monday, ironically, was April 1st. So I drive out to his place on Monday, and a guy meets me there, a big guy named Bear, a perfect name for this guy. Right. But uh, he meets me there and tells me that this gentleman that I'd been doing business with was killed in a car accident the night before. Yeah. Uh, so, and you know, I, my first thought was, well, that can't be true. They're just, you know, cause you hear some stories, right. uh, but sure enough, he had been killed in a single car accident. I'm not sure that it wasn't, uh, you know, maybe some kind of an attempt on it to, to take his own life. But, um, so what that resulted in, I was stuck with, uh, and then later found out that not only was he selling me these contracts, but he was selling the same contracts to other people. Um, so we ended up having a big meeting of of all the people that had invested with him and it was kind of like a monopoly game where you know we traded deeds to property back and forth and i ended up with a with a few properties and what kind of the kick in the gut moment is i had i had several people that invested with me um and a lot of the people that invested with me were older individuals that just needed an income mm -hmm. and so you know i was faced with a situation where i could either go to them and say hey sorry you guys have lost a significant amount of your money you knew the risk going in um, or, or I could make it work. And, and it would took about six years to get all of those people paid back every, no one, actually the investors never really knew any of this happened. Um, I just paid them off and, and took care of them. And it was a significant loss to me, but the, um, it, you know, every one of those things and every kick in the gut moment I've had over the last 30 years, if you stop and look at it, there's always, always something to learn from it. And, and a way to change what you're doing to avoid that in the future. 
and I tell my employees, I don't, I don't mind if you make mistakes. I, I almost, in fact, expect you to make mistakes because if you're not making mistakes, you're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I expect you not to make the same mistake twice. Yeah. Um, and so that was the situation there is that that was a, you know, that was a pretty significant time. I was at the time I was in my thirties, uh, well, late thirties, you know, and I could have either gone to these investors and said, I'm sorry, you lost your money, or I could have done what I did. And because of the way I handled it, um, I can call any of those people. I don't use them anymore. I'm fortunate. I don't have, to, I don't need investors anymore, but, um, I could call any of them and they would send me a check for a hundred thousand mm. uh, dollars because of the, of the way I handled that situation. Yeah. And you know, this is what we were talking before the show. And we always talk about, you know, how we're going to add value to the men of abundance community and stuff. And this right here, guys, is a perfect example of a true abundant leader because one getting into the, why this all happened and talking with so many business owners and so many people in general is a lot of the times when you really look back on how it all came about, it, it was complacency and, and getting comfortable and you got just too comfortable with this particular client. And it's easy to do that. And you think, mm -hmm. well, this guy that I've been working with for years, obviously isn't, but you don't know what's going on in your life. So there's these little things in place that you always have to make sure you check in the property. What gets, you know, what gets checked gets done, right? They always Absolutely. say and, and gets done right. At the same time, you could have done like so many people like and just ran from it, or hid yep. from it, and or even not hid from it, but go to them and say, "Hey, I need my money. You know, you're, you've lost all this money. We're both out. You're out more than I am. Obviously, you put your money in, but hey, what can I do about it?" But it just says so much to your character and who you are. And guys, this is why, man, I just have so many conversations with guys and like, I don't understand why my life is jacked up. I don't understand why this has happened to me. When you look back at the patterns of decisions that you've made, it's because you don't have somebody that you can call and say, hey, I need a $100,000 check. Yeah. Why? Because you haven't set up those, you haven't fostered those relationships. And it's just beautiful. I love it. You know, the thing that this is uh, maybe the more of the podcast for this, but you and I are both fathers. I know because we talked a little bit before, but um, I have to say that one of the major reasons I did that and I was able to I didn't have a decision. There was no decision. It was a matter of you, you pay these people back. There was not a decision mm -hmm. of do I, do I do it this way or do I do it another way? And I think it was because of the way my dad and my mom both, I mean, but my dad was a business owner for most of my life. And you just, you see the way, you know, those people in your lives handle their business and that, that at least, and hopefully that reflects, reflects onto my three boys um, mm -hmm. that they will be that, those kind of people too. Yeah. And I'm going to contrast that a little bit because while my dad was a, you know, he was a great man to be around and stuff. He wasn't the best father figure. He wasn't the type of person that was abusive or anything like that physically, but a little bit mentally. And I'm not going to get into that as much, but he was not that if he could find a way to get over on the system, if he could, you know, get, get something quick uh, for a little work, uh, he would take that opportunity. And that's the environment I grew up in. Unfortunately, quite frankly, my brother took on many of those traits. I left and joined the military and took on completely different traits. Fortunately, I had some great leaders throughout my career and uh, changed that whole mindset. Fortunately, I'm just so thankful for that myself. You know, that's so interesting. And I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but no, um, because I, I come from this background where I had, you know, I, I had this great father figure and, you know, he was a great guy. I actually passed away last year. It's been a little over a year, but I also admire people like you though, that didn't have that necessarily and still made the decision to become a person of integrity. And, you know, I mean, cause you could just as easily go either way. And I agree with you a hundred percent. I mean, it's kind of, you know, some people look at it and say that I'm kind of cold or insensitive when I say most of these people that you see, on the street corners or whatever are, you know, there are some of them there because mentally there, there's something wrong. And I understand that there's nothing they can do about that. But a lot of them are there because uh, the choices that they made in life. Um, and so, and, and, you know, it's, it's crazy if, if one thing I could, and I may be getting ahead cause I've listened to your podcast and I kind of know where you go, but I think the most important thing is to think about the choices you make and realize that a choice you make today uh, may impact you five years from now, 10 years from now, mm -hmm. uh, may impact you tomorrow. But um, I think 
a lot of times we think, well, I'll make this choice today and it's not going to, you know, I'm not going to have the impact for five years and I'll deal with that when the time comes. But, you know, you've got to, you've got to realize that all those choices have consequences and the consequences can either be good or bad. Yeah, no, absolutely right. I don't find it cold at all. In fact, I was in a homeless situation for 43 days uh, Mm -hmm. in Hawaii. Uh, People probably won't feel sorry for me about that. That's not a bad place to be homeless, is it? It's really not, quite (laughs) frankly. I mean, we we chuckle about it, but it's really not. Now, the fact of the matter is a lot of people, homeless people equate homeless with jobless. And that's not the case in Hawaii. I don't know about other places, but I can speak for Hawaii. Homeless in Hawaii, many of those folks have jobs. They get up from wherever they're sleeping at with their family in a tent on the beach or behind between buildings, and they go to work. Mm-hmm. They just can't afford the housing. The, the median yeah. house in in Hawaii is five hundred thousand uh, dollars, and the rent is two three thousand dollars a month. You know, so, but I say that because I'm being amongst many of those folks and having many conversations, some of them are there because they want to be there. Literally. I mean, they live right on the beach, they go surf, they get government subsidies, so on and so forth. And they're not doing terrible. There's showers everywhere. Not a bad place to be homeless, but yeah. many of them made poor decisions and they continue making poor decisions. One living in, <laughs> in Hawaii, uh, yeah. when they could easily go somewhere else, El Paso, New Mexico, and do what they do and have a much better life just not on the island. Yeah. It's, it's a fact. And it goes so many different ways. There, there's a lot of them that made poor decisions. There's a lot of them that are mentally uh, unstable and they, they truly have issues, but they continue making poor decisions because I see them in the streets and they will do something that's completely, they have no regard for their own safety. They have no regard for the safety of the people around them. They're completely defying anything that is of societal norms and they could care less. And then they wonder why they're in the situation they're in. I'm not saying conform 100% because most entrepreneurs don't. Most yeah. business owners don't. You, you got to you know, make, make better decisions. And I yeah. do agree with that. Well, I heard a, a thing the other day, and I've heard this a couple of times from different people. But <clears throat> in the United States, you know, we were talking about the, uh, the blessing it is of being born here. But not, I heard that 97% of people, see, what was it? There was, if you, if you, did, if you did three things, 97% of the people that do these three things are above the poverty line. They're, they, they make it all right in life. Number one is finish high school. Number two is get married before you have any kids. And number three is to have a job. You know, So those three things are not that difficult to do. Those are not tough decisions to make, but 97% of the people that make that decision do okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, I thought that was a really interesting t- statistic because a lot of times we sit back and think, you know, these people didn't have a chance or they didn't, you know, they didn't get the opportunities that I did. Um, Mm -hmm. But the opportunities are there. It's just a matter of the decisions you make to either take advantage of those or not even look at them. Guys, when you're thinking about this kind of stuff, I caution you to check what the states, you know, what's being talked about on the news because they have their own agenda. Literally go outside or even Corey, some of the people that you grew up with and they grew up in the same environment you grew up in. And see where you're at, see where they're at. Some are better off, some are not. You're better off than some, some you're not better off than. So for instance, with myself, I literally grew up in a trailer behind another man's house in his backyard. We couldn't even afford the trailer park until my mom divorced my dad finally and went on with another guy. We upgraded to the trailer park. Right? <laughs> so that was my environment. I was had the mullet and the whole bit and everything. And you know, I'm doing pretty damn good right now. And when you say, well, Wally, you're white. You have the white privilege. Okay, I'll, I'll, I will, I will concede to that because I was the opportunity advisor for many years in the army and uh, civilian. So my Mexican friends are the same thing. Some of them are incarcerated. Some of them aren't with us anymore. And others are doing amazing. I, one of them was a neighbor, ended up being a neighbor of mine in Hawaii yeah. and doing, um, owns two houses in Hawaii and doing freaking amazing. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's, and it's all about, the, and him and I sit down and talk about this. It's all about decisions that we made. One, we made a decision to get the heck out of the environment we were in. It's really about decisions. And it, here's the good news, guys. You can start making different decisions today. All right. And we're going to get into some of that here in just a minute as well. Some of the decisions that Terry can help you make for sure. Yeah, just because you've made the wrong decisions in the past doesn't, doesn't um, you're, you're not stuck there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where a lot of people 
uh, start getting depressed because their life conditions don't match their blueprint that they believe their life should be. And then the depression part comes in. That part you can change. But when, when you start thinking that you're stuck where you're at, then mm-hmm. people get depressed. They think they're hopeless and they, they just can't improve their life. And they literally can. Yeah. Uh, it takes work, though. Don't, don't get me yeah. wrong. No, it's not easy. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get into more about what it is that you're doing and how you got started in what you're doing today. Well, um, it's a long story, 30 year story. But um, like I said, my dad was always self-employed. So my entire life, I knew I was going to do something in business, be in business. I've got a degree in accounting. And um, so I started out as a controller for a title company. Uh, here in Albuquerque. And there was a guy that used to come into the title company that wore blue jeans and flip flops and a t-shirt, young guy in his thirties. And I thought, whatever that guy does, that's what I want to do. Cause I would love to just hang out in my blue jeans and flip flops. Turns out he owned an escrow company. Uh, so a few years later, I tell people this and they think it's a joke, but it's really not to avoid getting fired. I quit my job at the title company um, and started an escrow company. And I still own that escrow company. And in fact, I still have this, the first employee that ever went to work for me um, in that company. And then from then, over years, we, we were an escrow company for uh, 20, 20 something years. And then we became, I started a trust company, which is where I, I run both of those still. Um, and both of those are record keeping type businesses. In the trust business, um, we, allow people to invest their individual retirement accounts in non-traditional type assets. So we allow people to buy real estate, to buy uh, precious metals, to invest in private businesses and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's what I'm doing today among, among several other things. I get bored with any one thing, so I, I've got a, other businesses going, but uh, mm-hmm. that's the main thing that we do. And that's uh, uh, the biggest part of my business, I guess. You know, I have the tagline for men of abundance, living your life of abundance and family, faith, finances, and fitness. And the finances one, while I'm doing pretty good. And over the years, I've, I, I've done real estate investing on my own. I you know, did lease options and stuff like that. And I see the, the benefits in that. But like with my current situation, it's not, it's not urgent for me, I don't believe. Now, you would probably say something different because you have a different level of knowledge. And every time I have this conversation with somebody who does what you do, you know, it's it's a different conversation, but with my current situation, with me being retired from the military, with my benefits, I'm fine yeah. I'm, uh, for the rest of my life and for my wife's life. Few people actually are in the situation that I'm in, quite frankly. Most are far from it. They have nothing for the future. They have no insurance. Uh, and it's just a terrible, terrible place to be. I mean, if that's not keeping you up at night, guys, you you're just not, you just don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'm not trying to put the fear into you. I'm just trying to bring this to light. But what would you say to the guys that are not in this situation or even to myself about when it comes to financing and IRAs and all this kind of stuff? You know, I don't, surprisingly, I don't disagree with you. I mean, everybody's in a different situation. And over the years, I've done some financial planning for people and stuff because of my background. And and I would agree with you. You're in a great situation where you have income uh, because of your service to our country. And thank you for that. you have, you have some income for the rest of your life. Um, the thing I think that people need to, and in any situation, they need to put something away. Um, and it doesn't even need to be a lot. If we're talking to people who are in their 20s, you know, if you started putting $100 a month away, you know, quit, quit going to get coffee every morning or something like that and put that in. It, it doesn't have to be in a retirement account. Um, I'm a big believer in the uh, in Dave Ramsey, the way he, some, most of what he says, I don't believe about everything okay. he says, mm-hmm. but most of what he says. And, you know, the interesting thing is if you put it into a retirement account, a traditional IRA, um, most of the time you don't even realize it's gone because of this tax savings and stuff. The other thing I would say too, for those that are listening that work for a business that provides a 401k, you're, I, I got to be careful and not to be too strong, but I would say you're crazy if you don't at least contribute enough to get the matching that the company's going to offer you. It's free money, it, right? It's free money. And you're making, a, if, 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 they, if you put in 2% and they put in 2%, you're making a 100% return on your money right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Who can't figure that out, that that's not a good deal? <laughs> right. you know? So I would encourage doing that. If you're not in that situation, 
you know, the problem is, is when we're young um, and, you know, you're not as old as I am, but when, when we're young, you don't, you don't think about what's going to happen when you get old mm-hmm. and then this being older sneaks up on you really quick. Um, I'm in a little bit in your situation, not because I have any income coming in, you know, from a pension or anything, but just cause I don't ever plan on retiring. Um, but you still have to keep in mind, I don't, I don't plan on retiring, but something could happen that would keep me from being able to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need to keep those kinds of things in mind too. So I, I think it's never a bad idea to put something away for the future. Yeah. Um, I guess that's the best way to put it is, is you, that's never a mistake. I don't care how much you put away, how much or how little you put away. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. I 100% agree with that, for sure. Because, you know, most people, quite frankly, I don't know about most, but I don't look at the numbers as much anymore. And you might know, but quite a few people are just one emergency room away from being desolate. I mean, having like all their funds drained, because it just blows my mind how much it costs just to go to the ER. And one lady, in fact, that's here in the community, she was saying that she had a investment portfolio with the company that she worked for. And I guess the company went away or something, or she was still working for the company. Bottom line is this, her whole investment was gone. Her life, she's like in her late fifties, everything is completely gone. So that right there deters a lot of people from putting their money into that type of program. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the main things that I, uh, when I talk about self-directed IRAs, and that that means you know putting things in investments that are not traditional stocks, bonds, mutual funds, that kind of thing. Mm. And the biggest thing I can tell people is do your due diligence and don't invest in something that you don't understand. Mm. So, so if you get a phone call and somebody telling you that, you know, we've got this great investment that'll make you 20% guaranteed or whatever. First of all, anybody that says the word guaranteed, hang up the phone, run away. Nothing in life is guaranteed. Um, so including investments. Um, so my biggest thing is encouraging people to, to do their own due diligence and by that, I mean, educate themselves about the investments. Um, I don't know how many people I see over, I've seen over the years that invest with somebody and didn't even take the time to Google their name to find out if they were a legitimate person. And if you had done that, if they had done that, they might have found out that maybe this guy was scamming people in Ohio or scamming people in Washington State or who knows. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have you know, we talked earlier about the vast amount of information on podcasts. There is so much information about everything out there. So there is no excuse not to do your research and figure out, make sure you understand what you're investing in. Now, that's not going to, that's not going to ensure that you never lose any money. Um, people need to understand there's always that possibility if you're investing money. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the answer to that is, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's an old cliche, but it's very important very true, to keep yeah. in mind. And you know, even though I own a company that allows people to invest in non-traditional assets, I don't have all of my investments in non-traditional assets. I have, you know, I have some of my money in the 401k that my company offers. I have, I have an individual retirement account, an IRA that I have some money in, uh, that are in, that are in non-traditional assets. But then I also have some money in things that I understand that I can touch and feel real estate here in, in my town. Um, so, so you need to be able, you need to diversify so that if any one thing doesn't work out, that doesn't wipe you out. Yeah. Um, so, you know, an, an example, and I see this a lot, people, people have a hundred thousand dollars in their IRA account and something comes along that says it's going to pay some ridiculous amount of interest. They put all their money into there thinking that's the next, you know, that's their lottery or that's their big payoff. And then they lose it all. And what I would suggest is, you know, put 10% of your money in that. And, and, and if it works out, great. Now, you didn't make as much as you would have if you put 100%, but the downside is a lot smaller and a lot easier to live with. Yeah, you have to calculate your risk too, uh, no matter where you go. Uh, mm-hmm. Great information, man. I truly, truly appreciate you sharing that. So now actually we're going to get into the pay it forward round. Where we're going to share a little bit more on specifically, you know, what people can do. You ready to do that? Sure. Share one to three actionable steps that you feel that men of abundance should take today. 
Um, you know, the first thing that I didn't mention, and, and when my boys all got married, I told them this, and, and I really believe this. I think the first thing, one of the first things you need to do is you need to give back. You know, a portion of your income needs to be given to somewhere. I, I happen to belong to a church and I give mine there, but that, that it needs to be given somewhere else. You need to give back out of the abundance that, we've, that you've received. And it's amazing to me, people that say that, I, well, I can't afford to do that. The people that I know and that I've seen that do it, all of their other finances kind of, it, it helps work out their other finances because of the discipline of knowing that I'm giving a percentage of my income here, that goes first. And that surprisingly helps them get everything else in alignment, you know? Yeah. So that's hey, the first thing I would say. I, I, let me interject right there, because if you just tuning into Men of Abundance for the first time, those of you who've been listening for a while know this. This is how my whole abundance journey got started. Number one, I started being grateful for the things that I had in my life. Number two, I started giving more of my, more of my time, treasures, and talents. Look, guys, don't try to figure out why this works, and, and it will definitely help you in your life. You give more of what you, you give of what you want more of, mm -hmm. right? It just works. Enough people have said it on this show, many other shows, and throughout the course of history and throughout the Bible. If you're if you're a Bible reader or not, it, it's yeah. it's just out there. It's yeah. true. So I th thanks for sharing that. Well, and I I think the important thing too is is you don't do that in order to receive something back. 100%. You do it because it's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. and that other stuff just comes along. I mean, right. you know, the other thing, the next thing I would say is you know pay, and, and these are old kind of things that you've heard before, but pay yourself first. You know, mm -hmm. I, now I would say pay yourself maybe second, but um, put something away. And even if it's $10 a month or any number, you know, that you can comfortably put away, start putting it away. Um, because if you always say, I'll do that tomorrow, I'll do that next year, next year never comes. Um, and you would be amazed at how fast that grows over time. Um, so that's, that's the second thing. And I guess, you know, everything to me, like everything becomes the first thing, but the thing that you mentioned about being grateful, um, you know, I, I watch a lot of, YouTube videos and listen to podcasts and stuff. And I'm just convinced that the people that enjoy life and are happy are the ones that get up every morning and are thankful for the things they have. Um, and I, I mean, I'm very, I'm very blessed, you know, so it's, I, I can't think of all the things that I should be grateful for, but even the person, you know, like you, and maybe you can attest to this, like when you were living on the street in Hawaii, you still had things to be thankful for. And, and I think it's important to, I think just the, the, um, the um, action of doing that, thinking about that every morning is going to change your mindset and, and your trajectory in life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I, that was a, my reason for being, <laughs> I was living out of my truck actually in Hawaii. That was a decision that I made for a particular reason mm -hmm. um, that I share every once in a while. But now, I, I totally agree with that. It's just, I wake up every morning with an attitude of gratitude. It's extremely important to be grateful, not only for the things in my life, but for the people and the relationships and my health and living, you know, being born in America and living in America, all these things just add up. And it's just the little things. Even when you start your day like that, it's like everything else just kind of flows. Things can go wrong and they will go wrong, mm -hmm. but you'll have a different perspective on it throughout the day. That's been my experience anyhow. Yep, I agree, 100%. What rituals make the biggest impact in your life? Um, well, we just talked about it, getting up and, and thinking of the things I'm grateful for. Um, I spend some time every morning, you know, some people might call it meditation, whatever, but I, and I, I don't do it every morning. Some mornings are too busy and I don't get time to do it, but just, um, you know, spending some time just thinking about what you have and, and maybe what you need to, how you need to change your life, what you need to do better, um, that kind of thing. Um, I'm not a big, you know, a lot of people read a lot of books and stuff. I'm not a big reader. I've become a big podcast listener. Um, and I think there's uh, also, I'm, I need to start getting to, uh, books on tape. A lot of friends listen to books on tape and are not on tape. That's how old I am. <laughs> Whatever, downloaded books. Um, but I need to do that. But, um, you know, I think just, just, understanding what your what your purpose is what you're doing things for and in my case it's for my family and mm -hmm. and so that just 
that just is what, uh, what gets me going every day. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and speaking of, um, content and, and books, audio books, I'm a huge fan of audio books and podcasts. What podcasts would you recommend that our abundant leaders uh, listen to and why? Well, it depends on kind of what you're into. I, I enjoy real estate. So I listen to bigger pockets is a, is a great one. Um, you know, I, the only thing about that is I think it's a great podcast, but not everybody does, you know, buys a hundred houses and makes tons of money. And and I think people have to realize that, that those are a unique few people that do really well, but everybody could, everybody can do that well. Just not everybody does. Um, you know, one of kind of an off uh, offshoot one is I love to listen to uh, the forward, which is a Lance Armstrong's podcast, just because mm-hmm. he has some interesting people on it. Um, and then another one, I, again, because I told you, I, I, I'm fascinated by people, what they do for a living. There's a, uh, uh, how I built that is one of the podcasts I like oh, to listen yeah, to. I love that. I love yeah. that. That one I've listened to. I do like that one a lot. It's really cool. And I'm always looking for more. I, I kind of do like you is you, you got to be careful cause you get too many, but I just, I don't listen to podcasts anywhere other than in my car typically. Mm-hmm. Um, so it doesn't, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a lot better in my mind to listen to those than it is to listen to mindless music or the news that's just pretty much depressing all the time. I know. I, I very seldom have, if if ever, only time I think I have the radio on or music on in my car. And if I do have music on, it's usually off of Pandora or one of those um, streaming platforms because it cuts out most of the news yeah. uh, that I just don't want to get into my head. Um, yeah. but normally I'm listening to different types of content and I'm glad that you brought that up. We talked about it before as well. When you switch from different types of content constantly and you listen to a podcast, like for instance, a real estate podcast, you're going to have a guest on, they're going to share their book, they're going to share their tools and stuff and their techniques. Then you're going to listen to the next episode, and they're going to share their tools and books and techniques. And then next thing you know, you're looking at all this different stuff. And you're not, you're not moving forward. Uh, Now, what I say to that is, pick one, study the heck out of it, take action and move forward. Uh, They all work to a different degree. It's just a matter of what you're willing to do. And I'm talking about across the gamut, not just real estate on all kinds of stuff. Yeah. 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 It all comes down to actually, it all, it all comes down to action. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I used to, uh, <clears throat> cause I bought cash flows and stuff for years and I've been to a few of them recently, but I used to go to seminars all the time around the mm-hmm. country where people would talk about buying cash flows and all that kind of stuff. And I'd see the same people at those year after year after year. And I'd say, how many, you know, how many contracts have you bought? Well, I haven't bought any yet, but I'm getting ready to, I'm studying, you know, and this may not be good advice, but you got to just jump in sometimes, you know, jump in and you're either going to sink or swim. You're going to figure it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. You learn by doing what, what happens with those people is they get that, that endorphin high. Uh, They love the, the excitement of the possibility of, having, you know, 12 properties that are highly lucrative uh, and they love hearing those stories and they love getting all that information, but they're just terrified to actually pull the trigger uh, mm-hmm. and, and actually make something happen in their own life. But they're spending thousands on these, on these, uh, all these conferences and stuff. Yeah. Well, and some of them complain because they spend all this money on these conferences. And the thing you have to realize is the, that's just education. You know, mm-hmm. if you don't do something with it, it's a waste of money. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, even college or whatever, I mean that if you go and, and you spend the money on that and you don't take action, you wasted your money. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So we, we talked a little bit about it just now in my mind, but what do you feel holds most people back from living a life of true abundance? Um, I think a couple things. Number one is choices, not realizing <clears throat> the choices they make have consequences. And the other thing is just fear, fear of doing something. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, totally. So what does living a life of abundance mean to you, Terry? Uh, gosh, that's a loaded question, Wally. Um, because it, it means, it, it means a lot of things to a lot of people. For me, it means that I, you know, I have a, I have a great wife that I go home to every day that, you know, um, we, I think no matter what financial situation we are in life or where we are, we'll be happy. We'll be fine because our, our, we're not, you know, our life is not based on that. It's based on our relationship with each other and that kind of thing. You know, having having three great kids and granddaughter, I mean, uh, daughter-in-laws and grandkids. I mean, that's, that's and, and you know, and I, I think you make, 
um, you know, I think Abraham Lincoln said, you're about as happy as you choose to be. Mm -hmm. And I think you make that choice. And then that doesn't mean, like you said earlier, it doesn't mean that things aren't going to go wrong or bad things aren't going to happen. Or, you know, I mean, uh, just attended a funeral on Tuesday afternoon of a guy that, that I had breakfast with. And that afternoon he had a heart attack and passed away. Those mm -hmm. things still happen, but, um, you know, you, it's, it's how you choose to deal with them and how you choose to let them affect your life that makes the difference. Yeah, it's all about you. You can sit down wherever you're at right now, even if you're driving your car, and you can think of a way to get yourself really pissed off. Mm -hmm. um, you can just look out your window and see somebody cut somebody else off, didn't even cut you off, and you get pissed off about that. But at the same time, you can sit there and think of a, what is it, Jack Smiley? I forget his name, the guy that used to be on Saturday Night Live, but yeah. you can think of a way to make yourself happy as well. It's all yeah. in your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great points. Absolutely love it. So brother, we are going to close this up. We are definitely going to uh, have your website. I got to put my glasses on, make sure I get it right. Uh, sunwesttrust.com linked up in the show notes. Is there anything else you'd like linked up in the show notes or that you'd like to mention and make sure that our abundant leaders get out of our conversation today? Well, you know what? I, I This is a little different conversation than I've had on other podcasts and I really enjoyed it. I, I got to, you know, it was like we talked about a little before the show, I guess it was a little more personal. Um, and I, I appreciate that. But what I can, what I can offer to people that may be of value to them is if they go to our website, um, if they're interested in a self-directed IRA, there's a book there, you can download an ebook, you can request my actual book that I wrote about that. If they want to contact me somehow uh, or about something like that, um, they can go to the contact us portion of that and mention this podcast. And I will get back to them and, and help them in any way I can. Um, and then just put a quick plug in for my podcast. It's called Focused on Biz. Um, has nothing to do with really what we've talked about today other than um, my fascination with what people do for a living. So I talk to business owners um, and, and consultants and stuff like that about business and how they got there and what they did to get there. So um, it's interesting to me. I used to say I only had one listener, which was my mother. Um, but she passed away last year, so I'm not sure I have any listeners, but uh, <laughs> but I enjoyed doing it anyway. Well, I'll tell you, that's one of the ones that I will actually tune into for sure, because I, I'm just a curious individual. And I'm, whenever I'm out on the street or anywhere, I always ask what people do to contribute to humanity. Yeah. Generally, they say they bring up their occupation. And that's not necessarily what I'm asking, but I let them answer that however they want to answer it. Yeah. Uh, Cause I believe people do much more than just what they do to make a, make a buck. It, it always intrigues me on how many, there are just so many ways that people make money and then how they got to that point. Wasn't how they started. <laughs> I love those yeah. stories. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely tune into that and I'll definitely have it linked up in the show notes, guys. So make sure you go check out menofabundance.com. Just search Terry in the search bar. Uh, the episode will pop right up. Uh, Terry, it's been an excellent conversation. I greatly Great. appreciate you and I and I look forward to uh, getting some feedback from what the guys get from visiting your website and checking out your podcast. Sounds good. Thanks, Wally. I appreciate the the time and the opportunity. And again, thank you for your service for our country. I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that too. Thanks. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.